tribunal members, we now have a uh, witness appearing via video conference and we uh, trust that technology will serve us well and it will all run smoothly. Um, Senator Larissa Waters uh, will be uh, yeah. her activities as a federal parliamentarian in advocating for protecting the reef. Thank you. Uh, Michelle, can I just note that, you know, in fairness to the other witnesses in the court and, and the tribunal in general, like we need to kind of limit this to the five minutes that everyone has yeah. been allocated. So I'm not sure how long. I think we have about eight minutes, and I'll try to cut it at an appropriate moment to pay respect to Larissa's intent to be here. Um, and it may be. Good evening everyone, it's Senator Larissa Waters here. I'm one of your Greens representatives in Canberra and I have the great honour to be the spokesperson on the Great Barrier Reef, which keeps me rather busy. I'm sorry I can't be there in person tonight. I'm actually in Canberra for a Senate inquiry hearing into domestic violence. Uh, so that's yet more important work to do. Uh, but I did want to take the chance to make some remarks tonight. I'll unfortunately miss all of the wonderful evidence that's being presented, so I won't make a judgment, um, but I will make some contributions. And I want to, of course, acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that we're meeting on, the Turrbal and the Agora people, and also take the chance to say thank you to the Australian Earth Law Alliance and to Michelle particularly for bringing the plight of the Great Barrier Reef to the attention of the international community um, and the international earth law community. It's a wonderful movement and together with all the other pressure that community and environment and scientists are placing on our governments, I'm hopeful that it will actually be successful in helping to protect the reef. Um, it's a really important time in history. The reef is facing more pressure than it ever has before at any time um, in, in human memory. Uh, sadly, climate change is the biggest threat to the reef and of course we have a government that's just repealed our carbon price. Uh, we also know that uh, runoff from agriculture is a massive threat to water quality and again we've had $40 million slashed by this government out of the program that was helping farmers to modernise their farming techniques. Um, Crown of Thorns is another uh, key threat to the reef and a new and emerging threat is this mass industrialisation that both the Queensland and Australian governments are just reeking on the reef. Now, we've got 12 ports in the Great Barrier Reef already, and we know that they're not even being used to their full capacity. So why on earth is the industry pushing for four or five expanded, bigger coal and gas ports? It makes absolutely no sense. Um, and of course, it's driving the biggest ever program of dredging, dumping, um, and shipping that the reef's ever seen. So the dredging to make the ports bigger and deeper, of course, maximises turbidity and causes all sorts of problems for wildlife and seagrass. It's then cheaper for the big mining companies to dump that dredge spoil back into the waters of the Great Barrier Reef, a World Heritage Area, and even in the marine park. It's cheaper for them to do that than it is to treat the spoil and dispose of it safely on land. So of course we have mass offshore dumping. Um, and the shipping problem, we have hundreds and hundreds of more ships slated to be transiting the reef, just as if it was merely a highway for fossil fuel export. Um, so the reef is really um, under the pump. Uh, now we saw what happened with the mass uh, dredging and dumping in Gladstone. The fishing industry was brought to its knees. The harbour became a toxic mess. There was mass fish disease and death. Uh, and the World Heritage Committee came out and said, what on earth are you doing to this beautiful World Heritage icon? Now that was the first slap on the wrist that this government got. We've had three now, and unfortunately nothing has changed yet. Um, I'm hopeful that the community pressure and the scientific pressure and that international pressure will change the government's mind, but we, we sure have a long way to go. Now the Abbott Point, um, Coalport, is the uh, latest front in the fight to save the reef. After the disaster at Gladstone, you think they would have learned, but unfortunately, uh, the government, both state and federal, approved the expansion of Abbott Point to, to make it, to authorise making it the world's biggest coal port, and not just anywhere, in the Great Barrier Reef. So the sheer madness that is dominating um, both levels of government, is it's just heartbreaking. Um, and what's it for? It's for coal export, Abbott Point. It's for the Galilee Basin coal. Now, we know that these coal mines will be bigger than any mine that we've ever seen, about three times as big as the biggest existing Australian coal mine. And um, 350.org has done some calculations. If all of the coal in the Galilee was mined and burnt, 
and it was a country, the Galilee Basin was a country, it would be the seventh biggest emitter of greenhouse gas emissions in the entire world. So you get a sense of the scale of what's at stake, and that is why the campaign to save the reef and to stop the Albert Point coal expansion is so critical to the future of the planet, um, let alone just the future of the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, now, the World Heritage Committee are specifically concerned about Albert Point, and they criticise the government for approving Albert Point. Uh, and they've, they've now given us three years of warnings. They gave us a really clear set of recommendations back in 2012, which said no new coal ports, um, particularly in pristine areas. Don't expand your existing coal ports where that would damage the overall universal value of the reef and just press pause on all of these approvals until you've actually done a long-term plan for the future of the reef. Eminently sensible recommendations, um, not radical at all. But do you think the government actually adopted those? Sadly, no. It took me to introduce a bill into the federal parliament to say, for heaven's sake, just legislate these recommendations. They're very easily done and they might keep the reef off that list of shame, um, the list of World Heritage Sites in danger. Now, if the reef was added to that list, we'd be only the second developed nation with a site on that list. And what an embarrassment for the biggest living organism that can be seen from space with a developed economy that can't look after it properly. Uh, I've recently reintroduced that bill because it didn't get any support last time around, but we don't give up, and I know you don't either. Uh, and I've just introduced another bill to ban offshore dumping for all of the reasons that I'm sure you're already across, but particularly the fact that the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority themselves, their internal scientists, warned against offshore dumping for the Albert Point Coal Port expansion. Um, sadly, the bureaucrat at the top that ticked the box ignored that scientific concern. Um, that's now come to light thanks to the powerful um, whistleblowing of some insiders, and, c and I commend them for that. Um, but sadly, rather than strengthen the independence of the Marine Park Authority, the government's now cut staff. It's cut 10% of the funding. We've had mass walkouts and redundancies. Uh, and it's been revealed that there are people on the board who've got links with the fossil fuel industry. So we need a strong and independent Marine Park Authority to look after the Great Barrier Reef and so... Yep. And I think that the terrible cutting off, I think that might be a really nice moment to stop that. So thank, thank you for letting me admit that.